Simon Reeve joins us now ahead of the second leg of his An Audience With Tour. It's great to see you this morning, Simon. This Is this like the most you've sat down ever? No. <laughs> you seem to constantly be on the go or on going somewhere on the move. Uh, it's a bit of a life policy. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> I is. think I'm always one of those people who always walks up an escalator. <laughs> yes. Do you know what I mean? I, yes, I never want to stand. Person. I never want to stand still <laughs> in that situation, but I'm very happy here. Well, look, there's lots to discuss on this tour. Um, lots taken from the book, which we'll talk about in a second. But the tour is kicking off again off the back of a very successful tour previously. Yeah. Um, and it's a real honest conversation with you and um, with people that have followed your travels. It's... I'm just I'm laughing just because it just sounds so extraordinary to hear you say <laughs> your tour. It's so bizarre. It's such a weird thing to do. And it wasn't my idea in, in fairness. I would never have thought it was possible. But yeah, it's the it's the extended my extended tour and I and I stand and I walk and I talk about my life. There's an honesty, which which the book is 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 incredibly a searingly honest to kind of your whole life, in fact. But searingly, I like it that. Is, I might it really that is, it really is though. I, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it. I guess it's a nice it's a nice moment to to meet the people that have been with you along these adventures, yeah. albeit on our sofas. But, yeah. you know we feel like we're living <laughs> it a little bit with you. Well, that's lovely of you to say. Yeah, because I suppose for me, it's when I started working making these TV programs, I never thought it would be anything like. Like a career so I did one and then I had to come up with another idea and then I'd come up with another and so and then and, and it's astonishing years and years pass and then I've been doing it for 15 years and yeah some people have been kind enough to watch <laughs> and when you're making the TV programs when you're out on the road there's only four of us that go you know there's there's more than that in here isn't there <laughs> let's be honest and four of us go and you don't have a huge interaction I suppose with the people who are watching God, there are just so many moments I guess too yeah. many really to try and put into any kind of perspective. You've just found yourself in minefields and the front line of combat, so all sorts, everything's been in there. Well, the, the programmes I make, well, I suppose the way I try and describe it is we, we, I, we try to go to extremes, really, and that doesn't have to just be extremely dangerous, although, as you say, I have found myself in some very tricky situations, but extremely beautiful, extremely interesting. And the one person that could stop it all in its tracks is your little boy. Because once he says, Daddy, I don't want you doing it anymore, <laughs> I think he's the only one that's going to control he, this. <laughs> he would definitely, yeah, he would, he, he can take my passport away. <laughs> but, you know, I didn't grow up travelling. I don't come from a wealthy, travelly background. That was one of the big reasons I wanted to do the tour, actually, was to just explain to people. I don't have the sort of background of privilege that people always assume that some mop head t male TV presenter must have had. You know, I grew up around the corner from here, actually, and playing on the estate around the back. So being here with you now in the studio is very, very strange I for bet. me. But I didn't grow up travelling. I didn't get on a plane until I started working. Um, and actually, you, you really quite dark moments. I mean, you, and you talk about it in the book. And you, I know you lost your dad as well at one point. Uh, you were slightly older then. But during your teenage years, mm -hmm. um, there were moments where suicide was something that was contemplated. You talk about mental health in the book and indeed in the tour. Mm. So you, you, you've actually come such a long way. Um, and there were a couple of moments going to Scotland, I know. Yes. Changed things and uh, a meeting in the Dole office. Thank which you for knowing all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I yeah, read yeah. Stuff. You've, you've compressed it better than I have. <laughs> and she's got loads of handwritten notes as well here, by the way. No, absolutely. So, yeah, I had a very dark time after I left school. I just went to the local comp. I was hopeless. I left school with basically no qualifications. I went on the Dole. I sank really, really low. And whenever I think about it, I get quite emotional because I've never really looked back until I did the tour and I was thinking about what I was going to tell people and I wanted to own up to being, you know, very fragile as a, as a youngster. Mm. I don't have the background that people always assume. Everyone always thinks I must have gone to some posh public school and university. <laughs> Neither. You know, no qualifications, started working eventually. But as you say, I had a very dark period where yeah, I didn't just contemplate the end, but I was on the very edge of, of deciding whether to, to jump. Mm. And that's how hopeless and helpless you can get when you don't know what you're going to do in life. And luckily, I found my path, as it were, and Scotland helped with that. Yes, you're right. And uh, I went on a journey to Scotland that transformed me, and I've been on a journey ever since, that's really. That's it, you really have. Well, Step by Step, The Life of My Journeys is the book and, of course, the tour. Back on the road. Thank you Back so much. Back on the road, Thank where I love it. Thank you. Where you love it. Thank you, you, Thank exactly. you so much. Not at all. Great to see you.